They beat Michigan State. And it was like, wow, James Madison. And they beat Michigan State in a game where they committed 32 fouls and didn't shoot that well. What happened in that ballgame? Sparty was one of 20 from three-point range. And it was the opening game of the season. From that single victory, all right, James Madison's like, oh, they could beat Michigan State on the road. They're, they're fine. They're great. This team hasn't been an underdog in any game since they beat Michigan State and then they beat Kent State the next day or the next game. Since that second game of the season, they've been favored in every single game except one that was on the road at App State, a game they lost and failed to cover. I think there's a little bit too much love for this Dukes team. I think Wisconsin primed to win by margin. If I'm playing, I'm laying. Amen to that, Teddy. All right, Wisconsin, it is here uh, taking on JMU. That's coming up a little bit later. Big shout out to uh, the chat rooms uh, across multiple platforms here on this Friday. Uh, Shout out to Instagram. Good to see you guys. YouTube shorts in the house as well as Facebook and Twitter. And of course, you guys know the routine. We're going to break down a few games. We are absolutely going to give a couple of best bets. And then we're going to answer as many questions as you guys have about the upcoming games here today as we keep an eye on a number of uh, games that are currently underway right now, including FAU tying it up with Northwestern. And let's not forget here, our good friends uh, from Baylor are really starting to annoy me. 63-47, plenty of time left in that game, though, uh, as we've got uh, Rob Vino ready to roll here uh, today. And Rob... Uh, We are going to talk about another late night game here tonight with another one of our favorite groups to fade. The Mountain West uh, Brigade rolls on here with Utah State tonight, taking on Jamie Dixon and TCU. Big 12 taking on Mountain West. Vino, how are we approaching this one? Well, I really, really, really um, (laughs) drilled this one down, Joe, to the point where I'm going to play Utah State over their team total of 72 and a half in this game. A few reasons why. There, there's some advantages here for Utah State, the Mountain West team, one coming from the free throw line. If you look at TCU throughout the Big 12 season, it's a team that didn't get to the free throw line very much, and it's a team that allowed a lot of free throws. They were number seven in Big 12 free throw rate, about middle of the road. Utah State in the Mountain West, didn't allow a lot of free throws. They were the third best at keeping teams off the charity stripes. So you got a good matchup there for Utah State. And then if you look at Utah State's offense, they were number two in the Mountain West in free throw rate. A lot of that due to great Osibor, the big guy in the middle. Um, but T- TCU put a lot of people on the charity stripe. And that's been a common theme of them, I want to say, the last two, three years. They, they, they do foul quite a bit. I mean, it's a it's a contact league. It's a physical league. So you have to take some of that into consideration. Um, they were eighth out of 14 teams. So maybe Utah State gets to the free throw line. I mentioned Great Osibor. Not a good free throw shooter. Only 62%, 63%, excuse me, from the line. He got there 267 times, more than anybody else on the squad. However, they're starting guard tandem. Darius Brown, Ian Martinez, those two guys both shoot 86%, and they're two and three in free throw attempts on the season. So it's always who gets to the free throw line, not necessarily what the team overall free throw percentage is. For TCU, um, team free throw percentage is pretty good overall. But I like Utah State to make some hay at the free throw line. And then I think just a combination of Utah State's ability to shoot the basketball number one in effective field goal percentage in the Mountain West this year, which had some really good defensive teams. Um, number one in effective field goal percentage, number one in two-point percentage against a TCU team that likes pace, 31st quickest in the country. So when you start combining really good shooting with quicker tempo, obviously equal sign says more scoring opportunities, and we like that when we're looking at Utah State. Over 72 and a half. TCU is allowed over 72 and a half in three of their last four. The only reason I mention that is because these last, you know, half dozen games of the season are generally the second or third time around against an opponent. You should play better defense at that point, not worse. TCU didn't get any better, like I say, allowed over this number 72 and a half in three of their last four. Utah State 
scored over 72 and a half in six of their last 10, four of their last five. So they're a pretty good offensive team. I think all this stuff adds up. The site here is Indianapolis NBA Arena. Um, probably a, a good spot for shooting background. You always worry about that a little bit, but I think it's going to be enough pace. Utah State shoots it good enough inside and out, penetrate inside and out enough. And when you get these teams that are good offensively, like both of these are, and you get them loose and free from the, you know, the binds of their own conference opponents, generally they're tough to prepare for. So I'm going to take Utah State here to get at least to 73 points in this game against TCU tonight. Yeah, I, again, Utah State just completely – it's I, I don't even know they, they're here congratulations but man that record is misleading uh and they're going up styles make fights right vino and tcu makes a majority of their uh points uh inside the two-point range and that's where they are not good defensively there that being utah state so the number three three and a half hovering around there on the side Certainly seems tempting enough. And we're in the final 30 seconds here, guys. It's a two-point FAU lead on Northwestern as uh, a quick uh, television timeout here. But FAU trying to hold on and advance as an eight seed. And all is well in the world, uh, Teddy, with the Baylor Bears. Just want you to know that uh, they are doing exactly what we had hoped in game number 22 and a half right now. They're laying on Colgate. And San Diego State, by the way, beginning to open up the lead 28 to 18 right now with six minutes to go in the first half on UAB. A big shout out to Killer J, John, Rob, uh, Titan CT in the house, and the rest of you joining us here in the chat room. Uh, hit that like button if you get a chance. We certainly would appreciate it. Drop any questions you have about some of these games coming up. We'll get to as many as we can as we're going to bring it back full circle here to one double R. 1L, that's Steve Merrill, ready to roll for a best bet here tonight. And uh, Merrill, before you do that, any of these games currently going? Uh, were you uh, were you in on any of these games? UAB, San Diego State, Marquette, Western Kentucky, Colgate, Baylor? Yeah, so I had five best bets for Friday. Only one of them has started. It was UAB. They're down 10-11 right now, so not looking great. But I'll tell you what, Joe, these games are so random. It really is an emotional <laughs> roller coaster. I had seven plays last night. And it could have gone anywhere from six and one to two and five. I ended up four and three. I'll take it. But so many games. Arizona, Teddy and I talked about it yesterday. We both had Arizona lost by a half because of a missed free throw. Had Dayton. Wasn't looking good. Then they came back to win. So, hey, two and one for the day. And then on the nighttime card, I had uh, Samford. I had Texas, um, Texas Tech. I had Washington State. It was looking like 0 oh and three. Ended up two and one. I mean, it's just all over the place. Once again, long-term perspective, I preach it more than anybody, I think, but it just shows why I hate watching these games. And look, I watch them as a fan, but regular season, I don't watch them because I don't need this up and down roller coaster. I need to see what happens afterwards, and then I reassess. And man, it is March Madness for a reason. And sad thing is, I think most people enjoy that. I personally do not. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you here, Sarah. It is uh, the randomness, the variance. Uh, it is a bit head-scratching here across the board but still plenty of games uh left to go here in march madness got a full slate here tonight give me a game here that you're uh you're leaning towards as a uh as a best bet coming up yes yeah, so i do have a late afternoon game still going and also three nighttime games so that four for one special is still available if you're joining us later the three for one nighttime special is available also i highly recommend a direct subscription so you get saturday and sundays hey how about a three-day pass great time to try mm. one of those three-day all access passes Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. But let's look at a free play also on the nighttime card, a game that was just a bit outside for making the cut, and it's the Duke Blue Devils minus the 12 and a half. Now, my power ratings only favor Duke by 11. I don't like giving up a basket in line value, but I still think Duke is the only way to play this game for a couple reasons. First of all, whenever laying double digits here in the first round, you always want to look for the motivated team, and there is no question Duke will not overlook this game. Not only did they just lose as an 11-point favorite to the hottest team in basketball, the NC State Wolfpack, but they also lost to North Carolina the week before that as a home favorite. So back-to-back -back losses, both straight up and against the spread, will ensure a focused effort tonight against Vermont, who's a big-name mid-major team. They've only made the Sweet 16 once in the history of the school, but they're still known for some tournament success. And, oh, look, they've been a, they've been a favorite now in 19 of their last 20 games. 
And uh, this is a huge step up in class, to say the least, for the Catamounts. And they haven't exactly stepped up well in class this year. In fact, one of the last times they were a dog was back in mid-December. They lost to another ACC team on the road by 22 points. That was Virginia Tech away from home. Um, they also struggled in some other non-conference games. They lost to Colgate, who was getting blown out by Baylor as we speak. Lost by them by six at home as a favorite. Um, so I do think this is a monumental step up in class for Vermont, and I don't think they'll handle it well. Now, the Catamounts do play extremely slow, and that is another reason I left this off my official card tonight. But Duke has been a much slower half-court team this season, the last couple of seasons since Coach K departed, and I think they're comfortable playing this style, and they have a substantial offensive edge. Vermont is a slow half-court team that plays better defense, mediocre offense, and bad teams, when they get behind, they have trouble scoring. We've seen it so much in the tournament. You know, UVA, extreme half-court team, had only 14 points on Tuesday night. And then Colorado, the team that beat them, had only 11 last night at halftime. I don't like backing bad offensive teams as dogs, and I think Vermont is very mediocre at best. Look at Duke, minus the 12 and a half. That goes at 7 o'clock Eastern tonight. And if you want my three strongest plays and a late afternoon game, four-pack still available for Friday, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Also, check out my Fade the Public video which is on Wager Talk TV for Friday, and also all eight NBA games. Don't forget about the NBA. I did a video analyzing all eight NBA games tonight as well. That's free right here on Wager Talk TV. So click subscribe and click that bell as well for instant alerts. Yeah, unbelievable game right now. Northwestern ties it up uh, at, uh, it looks like, uh, did it get it? Uh, uh, some unbelievable this. It does look like with about eight seconds left to go, FAU is going to try to get this thing done, but... Uh, it doesn't look like they're going to be able to coming off on the last shot. And we got ourselves overtime, guys. I think the first overtime game, Teddy, right? Uh, in the tournament, uh, I think we're heading in now. Yes. Did we miss an overtime game somewhere last night? Or no. Uh, my brain is fried, <laughs> but not. I no, don't there was think nothing we did. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm remembering stuff from earlier in the week. Grand, well, Grambling, the Grambling <laughs> game went to OT. That's a tourney game. Yes. Um, what? Yes. Yeah. And kudos so, to them, by the way. That was a hell of a comeback sure. uh, for them, but 58 apiece. So those uh, those of you that might have had the under are probably going to have to sweat the next uh, five minutes or so uh, as that comes up there. Baylor, 80 to 62. Enough said with that there, uh, Teddy. We also have uh, UAB trying to close the gap against San Diego State, 31 to 22. Uh, we've got a bunch of questions we're going to get to in the chat room here in just a second, Teddy, but you got a best bet. Uh, that you're going to lay out for us here uh, tonight. Which one of these upcoming games might you be leaning towards? Let's talk about Purdue and Grambling. Number mm. one versus the number 16 seed. Right now, look at the way to talk live odd screen. Purdue minus 27, total sitting in the 139 range. Now, let me give you guys an all access real quick. We've got a promo code, Teddy7. You're going to get you 30 bucks off a seven-day all access pass. I always say, don't buy a play, buy a package. It's a great opportunity to get on board for the next seven days. Take 30 bucks off. Just use promo code TEDDY7 at checkout. So we talk about number 16 seeds. Grambling stands out as a particularly bad one. <laughs> All right. They're the weakest team in the field, or uh, one of the weakest teams in the field. It was Stetson's right there. But when we look at what they've done in step up in class games, it's been one blowout loss after the next. They were plus 26 and a half against Florida. They lost by 39. They were plus 21 and a half against Dayton. They lost that game by 30. They were plus 27 at Iowa State. They lost that game 92 to 37. They were plus 23 and a half at Colorado. They lost that game by 32. I know those are paycheck games for, uh, uh, for grambling. But that, my friends, is a track record of letting go of the rope when you get punched in the mouth. And they're going to get punched in the mouth here. You know, make no mistake. About it. <laughs> now we have a Purdue team that became only the second number one seed to lose their opening round game to a 16 seed in NCAA tournament history last year. What do we expect from Purdue this time around? We expect focus. We expect motivation. And we know that Purdue has a legitimate chance to write a comparable narrative to the one that Virginia wrote, who was the first team that lost in the opening round. Virginia went on to win a national title the following year. And Rob Vino's talked about it a couple times on today's show. It's the truth. You face one tough Big Ten defense after the next for the better part of three months, and now you're facing a lesser foe. Purdue's going to light up the scoreboard here. <laughs> I don't think Grambling can trade points with them at any point. 
And the Boilermakers, six and two against the spread at minus 17 and a half or higher this year. And both losses came by less than a bucket. They've been, they've proven themselves capable of winning by big margins. I think this one gets ugly early. Purdue first half, Purdue full game, however you want to bet them. The Boilermakers take care of business. Oh, I love it there. I mean, big shout out to, to Gramlin for coming back, getting it done in that game, Teddy, like you said, but come on. Uh, there's levels to this here, and they're not even remotely close to that level here. But I like Baylor, who seems to be uh, handling their business pretty well here tonight. And also, Rob Vino, you're going to take a look at this game for a best bet, only you're going to focus it on the total. It's shocking right now here, you know, that you'd look at the total in this game here. Uh, and if I had to make a bet, I would say we're probably looking for some points in this one. Is that fair? If we weren't, Joe, they'd probably have to pull the plug on our show <laughs> if I don't have an over for you here. Uh, probably have to be <clears throat> looking for another another outlet to do these analysis. Yeah. Um, Teddy laid out a bunch of it. I mean, maybe we can parlay together and both pick up a win here. For Purdue, it, they're just such a classic bully team, guys. Let me just go through what they did to teams that were overmatched in the non-conference this year. 98 points against Samford, 98 to 45. Samford, we just saw push Kansas to the brink last night. Moorhead State played Illinois tight for about 30 minutes, 87 against them, 83 against Xavier, 99 against Texas Southern. Sorry, Robert, Texas Southern. Happens to be the team that Grambling beat to win the SWAC. 100 against Jacksonville, 80 against Eastern Kentucky. Every single one of those seven games I just rattled off, the total went over the number given tonight, 139. Only one time, didn't it? That was the Eastern Kentucky game, 80 to 53. Hit 133. If I look at the other side of that equation, Grambling, always known like Texas Southern is, for taking on a really tough non-conference schedule. They played some really good defenses and some really good teams. Colorado, 95-63, to 63, up and over the number. They get blown out, but the game goes over the number. Iowa State, give up 92. Washington State, give up 83. Um, Florida, give up 96. Again, there's six games here where they played teams that are inside the tournament right now, the NCAA tournament. Four of those six went over the number that were given tonight, 139. The only two that didn't were Iowa State. They happen to own the second-best defense defensively efficiency-wise in the nation. And the other one that didn't was the eh, – I lost – oh, the Drake game because Drake plays very Drake. slow facing good defense. So the other four, all way over. Purdue's going to bully them the way Teddy suggested. They have no answer for Edie. And it's a perfect game, Joe, for – these surrounding parts, which everybody is so worried about, attempting to win six games, Mason Gillis, Fletcher Lawyer, mm. um, uh, Braden Smith, all these guys that shoot threes when things are fun and easy will probably make a bunch of threes tonight because it's going to be fun and easy. For Grambling, I think what I looked at in this game is I said, can this team possibly get the 60 points against Purdue tonight? Purdue's allowed 60 or more points in 13 straight games. I know they're Big Ten games. A couple of bad offenses in the Big Ten, right? They have 60 to Rutgers. Rutgers doesn't play a lot of offense. And if Purdue pulls guys late, Grambling has showed you that there's no let up in them as evidenced by the comeback the other night. And when you're behind, you know, you might refer to their pace. Oh, Grambling plays slow. We saw the other night. When you're behind, you can't play slow anymore. Your season's on the line. So. Speed it up a little bit because Purdue's going to get out early. I think you'll find pace, easy points for Purdue, plenty of them, probably 88 plus. On the other side, I probably only need 58, but I'll shoot for 60 here. I think this game gets over 139. The money pushed it a half a point. I think it could have got 138 and a half earlier. Now we're up to about 139. Grambling Purdue up and over that total. Up and over here. So we got a side. We got a total in that grambling game. And we have an FAU team who wishes they did not go to overtime. 70 <laughs> to 59 right now. The FAU Owls are handling business. Big shout out to uh, Instagram. Atomic Warren wants to know, is UAB going to come back here, uh, Merrill? I am seeing uh, an in-game number. I don't know. What did it close at? Seven and a half? I'm seeing... 
33 to 28. The in-game number is eight and a half, somewhere around there, nine. Uh, so yeah. if you hadn't gone pre-flop, would you get involved now? Here's my prediction, Joe. It was seven, it was six, went to seven, closed six. My prediction is San Diego State's going to win by either six or seven points. I can just see how this is played out because as I told you earlier, <laughs> I hate watching these games. Yep. This one's going to go down to the wire. So I'm neutral on it now. UAB's got a shot. I want to weigh in on the Northwestern Florida Atlantic game here. And this is something sure. people can use going forward with, with in-game betting. Florida Atlantic found a way not to win this game. They were up two in regulation and they got fouled. The big guy misses the front end of a one-on-one. -on -one. They could have gone up four. The game's over. Northwestern goes down and gets the layup, a nice layup with about 15, 18 seconds left. And then it's about six seconds left. And Florida Atlantic's point guard walks the ball up the court and settles yeah. for a contested three like they had the lead. It was a debacle at the end. And not surprisingly, Northwestern comes out and scores like the first six or eight points to run away with this game. Um, just something to keep an eye on in, in any other overtime games we might get here in the tournament. Momentum is a real thing. And Florida Atlantic really found a way not to win this game in regulation. Yeah, no, uh, not uh, it, they really did. Not to mention that Golden absolutely uh, what an acting job there to get a foul to go to the foul line, uh, acting like he got punched in the face. And meanwhile, the replay shows he got no such punch in the face, but he missed the free throw anyway, Teddy. So not a great job by him there, but uh, it does look like uh, they are toast here as uh, two bit of golf there says on Instagram. So it's a 70 to 61 game, a minute 27 to go. Uh, Baylor up 23 now, Teddy. Uh, and we do have a couple of questions about some of the games uh, coming up a little bit later. I'll fire them off. And uh, Teddy, if you want to take them or pass them on, uh, whatever you'd like to do. But Colorado and Florida seem to be a big uh, topic of conversation here in the chat rooms. Uh, we know the big man for Florida out. We know Colorado. Well, we know Boise State would have shot better than three for 700 in the game. Uh, we might not be talking about Colorado here. So what do you think of Colorado's chances of uh, in a second game here taking on Florida? I think, I, well, look, the line tells you Colorado's live. You know, it's a pick em game. Uh, they've taken every sharp dollar that there is. And I think the injury for Florida matters. So it's a Colorado or pass scenario for me. We've seen the teams come out of the play-in game. and have some success in every recent tournament. Colorado certainly has that potential this year. And Florida's vulnerable. Florida's low post defense just isn't there. You know, I, I lean over in this game more than the side, uh, but I wouldn't talk anyone out of looking at the Buffaloes. But a, a lot of these pick em type games, minus one, plus one, tournament time, we can expect this game to come down to the wire. Uh, I don't think there's a big margin for either squad in this one. My, my lean much more towards the total than the side. I like over. Liking over in, uh, in that game uh, coming up. Can't say we argue there. And then another big conversation here, Vino, is uh, it looks like uh, Nebraska and Texas A&M uh, is another big topic. Buzz, right? Going at it there against Hoiberg. Two teams you've talked a lot about on, uh, on this show throughout the season. It usually with Nebraska talks about an over, uh, and it looks like A and M has made that shift to say the hell with defense and rebounding. Where we got to score points here, uh, so it uh, it does feel like an over in this spot. But what are you looking at here with Nebraska and A and M? Yeah, it's interesting, Joe. Right, because Buzz Williams' team it couldn't hit water if they were in a boat with a dozen basketballs, and all of a sudden. That SEC tournament, now, is it a testament to how lousy the opposing SEC defenses are? Could very well be. Um, is it just that Texas A&M found a shooting stroke late in the season? They did play quicker. They actually mm. played right with these teams and played into their hands and performed really, really well. They crush the glass. If you know anything about A&M, you know that that's generally their best offense is throw it up, go get it, and stick it back in. Nebraska's going to have to be ready for that. Um, are they battle-tested enough on the glass out of the Big Ten? Probably, um, but Nebraska can shoot it. And I don't want to bet against any Fred Hoiberg team um, in this <laughs> tournament because he's finally turned that offense around. It took them a little bit, but they shoot it really, really well. And the chance for A&M 
to go into a scoring drought in this game is greater than it is for Nebraska. I mm. tend to agree, though, that uh, with the money move here toward the um, over, I think that, you know, if all, if all things work out as they look on paper, it should get up and over the total. But the one thing that would obviously hold me back is if A&M goes into one of those six-minute stretches where they just can't score. And then it could be lights out for them. Preference on the side would be Nebraska. Um, preference mm. on the total would be the over. But I would be a little bit leery of that because of the A&M side. Yeah, um, Freddie Rojas uh, jumping in the chat here. Uh, and I believe, Merrill, this was your first game that you covered here was with uh, New Mexico Clemson coming up at 3 o'clock. You want to give them the Cliff Notes version of what you're thinking with Clemson and New Mexico coming up? Yeah, I make the line two. It's currently around two and a half. So I think there's a little bit of value with Clemson. But the more I've looked at this game this week, even though I did initially have New Mexico in my bracket to win it, um, I think Clemson's a dangerous dog if they can slow things down. And it looks like New Mexico's becoming a pretty public pick all of a sudden to be a sweet 16 double-digit seed, which concerns me. Uh, but once again, Clemson under, New Mexico over, I think, are both correlated depending on how you want to play it. Uh, Teddy, are you uh, are you kind of shocked here right now? Um, some people yelling and screaming about Marquette uh, only up 31-28 on Western Kentucky. Uh, you know, I mean, they have done a, plenty of basketball to be played here, but you would have had to have laid, I think, what, 13, 14 points pregame. I think the in-game number is 16 and a half right now. And Marquette will at some point figure this out here, I think. What are you? So, uh, first of all, I'm having a good show uh, that the plays are winning while we're on air. You know, Boom. Baylor uh, is now gone final, uh, which one with uh, Extend the I, I show. felt like we were going to have to sweat it. We didn't. Uh, Northwestern isn't final yet, but they look pretty comfortable in the final minute of double digits against Florida Atlantic. So it's been a good show for me so far as the games are coming in like they're supposed to come in, which is the way I predicted them. I mm. really had no opinion on this Marquette West Kentucky game. I didn't come close to making a bet. It wasn't on my short list. I had no idea if Marquette was going to be able to light up the scoreboard or not and pull the first game back. The slight lean was to the over, but the total was already high uh, and actually got bet down before the opener. So it wasn't a game that I was close to making a bet. It wasn't a game I had any opinion on. And certainly, I'll just say this. When the star player comes back, <laughs> mm. it doesn't automatically mm -hmm. mean that everything clicks on all cylinders right away. Um, so from a uh, side standpoint, I don't know that I, that for me at least, I would not necessarily be betting Marquette in game, but I haven't watched any of it. I've been doing college basketball show instead. I can't have the games on. Dude, if I had the games on right now. <laughs> You'd be a you know, mess. Be a, uh, yes. uh, what? Uh, you know, there'd be no attention to be paid. So I have You to would be an absolute off. mess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can, I can only watch that. I, you know, I mean, in, in real life, I have, you know, as, soon as, as soon as I get off air, every, you know, all, all three TVs go on and we're watching the rest of the day. Uh, but yep. while I'm on air, I just can't do it. I, I get uh, a little bit uh, too distracted. 74-63 now, 24 seconds left, Northwestern and Florida Atlantic. I would imagine 137. I think that total, Vino, was 142, 141, somewhere in that ballpark. Does that sound about right? Because uh, that's got to be right now. Anybody sitting with the under has just got to be bent out of shape right now. And you, you got to wonder, I mean, Florida Atlantic all season long, Joe, right? They in San mm -hmm. Diego State. Go deep in the tourney last year, way further than expected. <laughs> Bring a lot of guys back. And Florida Atlantic, every game they played, you see money move their way. The games they played against mm -hmm. South Florida, no matter who was in the upper um, <clears throat> upper echelon of the AAC this year, when Florida Atlantic played them, the money yeah. obviously respected Florida Atlantic for no real good reason because they didn't give them any reason to respect them all season long. And here they are blowing an opening round game to Chris <laughs> Collins and Northwestern, who are always going to play with heart. You have to wonder about the kids on FAU if they're really focused on this season. And Dustin May, who was everybody's dream coach last year as he's pushing them to Elite Eight, Final Four, um, certainly not, met, not meeting expectations this year. I'm going to backtrack real quick here, Joe, um, to sure. what you asked Teddy about Marquette and Western Kentucky, only because I was involved in two different ways. Talked about it with Teddy the other day on Wager Talk today. I played a future on Marquette to make it to the Sweet 16. They were minus $1.35. Um, the the um, general rule of thought for me was, you know, it, normally when we talk about playing teams to go 
deep in tournaments, right? There's, well, don't take the future odds. Just roll it over, roll yeah. it over, roll it over. But when you're only winning, have to win two games, and the first game you're minus 1,100, you don't roll it over. You play minus 135. <laughs> right. um, yeah. I did, obviously, um, wager talk today. Teddy's job description is the challenge at the end and at least give you uh, some concern. And the concern was exactly that. Tyler Colin, will everything be rosy when he comes back? And you don't expect it to be rosy when he comes back, um, but they should be good enough to win this game in Western Kentucky for what it's worth. The style that they play, until you face them for a half, it's probably difficult to prepare for. Even though Marquette plays quick, Western Kentucky is just ultra quick. For the individual game, I played the Western Kentucky team total over 70 and a half. It just looked mm. low for a team that races up and down the floor. And even if Marquette wins by margin, the total is telling you that this game could easily be, you know, like an 88, 72 or something like that. So I thought their team total was low. Hopefully they can score enough to get to 71. Hopefully Marquette can win the game. Then I'll be live with two tickets. All right, so uh, the total was 142 in the Northwest and Florida Atlantic. We know that because John Finley and others in one of the chat rooms is pulling <laughs> his hair out right now <laughs> watching this game go to the end here. And, John, we feel for you, man. Been there, done this. 74-63, still 24 seconds uh, left to go in here. And a big shout-out, Teddy. Uh, young Brando's on uh on instagram right now sending you a big shout out says appreciate uh, all the knowledge uh over the last couple of years he says he's learned a lot from you so big shout out there young brand out there on the instagram chat don't forget to give us a thumbs up hit the like button here guys we certainly appreciate it become part of the wager talk tv family whether it be instagram youtube shorts youtube facebook twitter we certainly appreciate it. We got one more coming in, actually, from a few people here. So, Merrill, I'll send it to you. We'll get your final thoughts on a way out of here. Houston taking their foot off the second half worries people uh, with their game coming up here. I, I've always looked at Houston as a first-half team. They, under Sampson, they punch you in the mouth. They're bullies. That's what they do. So, I don't know that the full game is the best way to approach this, but 23 and a half, would you be worried about Houston coming in off a loss, by the way, would take their foot off against Longwood? No, it's the exact opposite, actually. I'd be less worried they're going to take their foot off the gas because they are coming off that bad loss. Keep in mind, their best player was out also against Iowa State. Longwood likes to play slow half-court basketball. Thing is, Houston loves to play that way. So whenever you get two teams playing the same style, whether it's fast or slow, I always think it favors the better team. The concern, though, lane 24 is if it is a slowdown game with a total of 128, really difficult to, you know, get to that margin. Uh, the first half line is 15, full game 24. So, obviously, uh, they've priced in what you're talking about. And we have seen some of these number one seeds start a little bit slow. Mm. Uh, obviously, Carolina did not cover the first half line yesterday. They covered the full game. Now, Wagner had played two nights earlier. Uh, we'll see if Purdue is in that same predicament today against Grambling team that just played. But, I like Houston full game. It's the only way I'll play it. I made the line 21 and a half, so it was a little pricey for me. That's why I didn't make the cut, but it'd be Houston or pass. So they should be fully focused. 77-65, Northwestern and wow. Florida Atlantic. So if you got the if you got the hook, you're in good shape. If you didn't, that's a bit Don't watch these problem. games, people, unless you yes, want to die yes. five years sooner. I don't know if I only said that 20 minutes ago, but goddamn was I right. I had nothing in this <laughs> game, luckily. True, unbelievable, That's Rob tough, Lynch. Man. We appreciate it. That's a tough it. way to lose. That, oh my goodness! It's brutal because as you know, Teddy Farley should have won the game in regulation. I mean, twelve with eighteen seconds left. What are you doing, Teddy? That's a tough I way mean, to lose, man, I, I feel. Well, didn't I? How many points did FAU right score in a second in this overtime? Six. Like how many points did they score? Unbelievable. It was fifty-eight all. I think it was fifty-eight all, wasn't it? So it was one six fifty-eight all. I yes. think it was 116 going into overtime. So you're going under by 26 oh. points still. You almost needed double oh. overtime to lose. Wow. Brutal. Yeah, that's brutal. Well, that's why they call it madness here, uh, people. And that's, that's why what most it's people bet about. on sports and they enjoy this roller coaster bowl. And, oh, it's that's all, it's it. Terrible for you, folks. Bottom line. Go, walk outside. go ahead, go ahead, Teddy. The best line shot, if you if you've got the best of the number, no sweat, dude. 142 and a half, 143, 143 and a half. You're good. Well, maybe You're a little good. bit of sweat. Uh, yeah. But once again, a hair. 
betting skills trumping <laughs> handicapping skills uh, for this particular game when it comes to the total. No question. Line well, never in doubt, GC. Yep. Yeah. Welcome Easy to madness. Easy. My goodness. Uh, By the way, this game didn't matter at all, Joe, because they play UConn on Saturday or Sunday, so none of this mattered. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's I I agree with you 100 uh, percent there. We do have uh, again, guys, plenty of games coming up. Steve told you four uh, games still available over at his page. Teddy, you locked and loaded. How many more games you got coming up here today over on your page? I got a pair in the association. uh, Sorry, a pair in the college ranks and one in the association. So three plays. Uh, still remaining, although you did get one of them, uh, Purdue, a client play for me this evening. Outstanding. Give that code one more time, Teddy. What's the code to uh, hop on board with you? Yeah, yeah. we ended the dance riding a 13-2 and two college basketball run. We've been running real good uh, the last week. Yesterday, Arizona wasn't as pretty. <laughs> it was a real frustrating <laughs> loss and turned, to, turned into a losing day. That said, we're 2-0 and so far today. That's the final now for Northwestern. Uh, and the promo code Teddy7 will get you $30 off a seven day all access pass. Just use Teddy7 at checkout. Done. Right. That's the way to do it. And Rob Vino, how many of you locked and loaded in here, my man, for the rest of the day? We're locked and loaded, Joe, with four presently. There will be two more big NBA play. But the biggest thing to note is I look back, I hadn't released a 5% college basketball play in two years. Oh. And I have one today. So wow. let, let's hope all goes well here. Um, looking at Teddy mentioned he doesn't have monitors on during the show. I've yeah. got monitors all over Why? the place. But yeah. I can't yeah. watch the YouTube chat during the show because I get too distracted yeah. by the chat room. So I never watch that. Right. Um, Western Kentucky. Now I, the 40 I got five yeah. chats uh, I'm trying to monitor here. So you think you got monitor issues. I got all sorts right. of monitor issues. <laughs> <laughs> I got all sorts of problems. Five no, percent the best the real, Rob Joe. Vino. Get over there. Merrill in the house. In fact, uh, hang around in an hour, guys. We'll see you so at the NBA tip-off show here. Still a slate of games and some opportunities uh, to make a few bucks there as well. So we've got plenty going on. Want to thank uh, all the guys for hanging out. Don't forget, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. uh, Drop us a comment below. Let us know who your favorite play of the day is. And then come back and join us. Of course, uh, another edition of Last Call coming up tomorrow before tip-off. And the NBA tip-off show just an hour away. So come back and join us. Guys, listen, best of luck. With all your plays, shout out to the guys in Instagram. We appreciate you. Shout out to YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. You guys are the best. Best of luck with those plays. Cash some tickets, guys. We'll see you again soon. Good luck.